Hebrew Kingdom Building. Zen. The struggling river. Say struggling river. Learning to master sin. Yeah, I said the word ain't. What's up? Ain't. <laughs> the struggle ain't real, y'all. Now you can see I got the picture of the guy with the... That's just letting you know that looks heavy, but it's probably not that heavy. Struggle ain't real. One thing we have to learn to master in these coming days is sin. Say sin. 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 It's what's going to keep a lot of people out of the kingdom. Sin is the only thing that can keep you out of the kingdom. And if you don't know how to master sin, it will master you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all I remember all we talk about Samson. What killed Samson wasn't the Philistines, it was his flesh. He didn't know how to control it. So he's always laying his head in Delilah's lap and then going to use his anointing. Thinking that the most hours is still going to be with you. Whatever you do not master will become your master. Hallelujah. We have to rid ourselves of sin. But we had that ride over the door because before you come in here, you, you got to come in here with clean hands and a pure heart. Hallelujah. Because you can worship all day if you don't have a lifestyle. A lifestyle, it means nothing. Hallelujah. You got to walk what you talk. You just can't teach it. You see these brothers on the corner, not all of them, some of them, they preach the word and then cut somebody out in the next breath. No ruach. That's religion. And they teach it from a standpoint of anger. So that means the ruach is not leading them. It's the spirit of anger that's leading. And then, you know, as soon as a, soon as a white person walk by, Edomite, we don't do a teaching on Edomites. Or who the real Edomites are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got Edomites in here. See, you, you, you might be looking on the outside. I'm talking about in your heart. Esau. Spirit of Cain. These brothers hated their brothers. And sisters. Hallelujah. The struggle ain't real. Learning to master sin. We are going to destroy a theology that we have been taught by the church. You see, the church says, no, 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 no. You can't. Everybody's going to sin. All the time. But that's why we have grace. You know, that's why you have you know, that's why, you know, they, the Jesus look gay. <laughs> you know, the blue eyes, silky hair, and he has the halo, and he's just so Greekish. Hallelujah. Because they make it seem like you can do whatever you want and just go on natural repentance. But the Most High tells you to be holy. Say be holy. Be holy. For a reason. Now, what we claim is perfect is not the same perfect in them as in the Most High. Because see, this person may fall, but in his eye, in the Most High's eyes, he may be perfect before the Most High. But I can't go and do the same thing because the Most High's matured me more. So if I commit that same sin, I'm not perfect. You see the difference? But we have to make sure that we are mastering sin and not living in the same sin constantly every day. No, you're not going to sin less, but you should sin less. Less than you did yesterday, less than you did last week, less than you, you should grow each and every day. Hallelujah. This Hebrew walking just about who you are. Because as Hebrews, you're supposed to be walking in power. Say power. You're supposed to have the anointed. Say anointed. You're supposed to be a light unto the world. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about it. By the time we finish with this, you should know how to master sin. And sin shall have no dominion over you. Hallelujah. 
Let's do it. The struggle ain't real. Learning to master sin. Let's lay a foundation. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 through 27. Make sure you got your Bibles out. Don't just go by what I got up. I can put anything up there. Make sure you're verifying it. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 through 27. When you did say hallelujah. hallelujah. I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean. Say you will be clean. I will cleanse you from some. A few. All your impurities. And from some. All your idols. I will give you a new heart. And put a new ruach in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my ruach in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, this is what Mashiach, we talked about this before. Remember when Nicodemus came, he was trying to be funny. He was like, yo, Mashiach, can a man be born again? Mashiach was like, come on, man. Yusha was like, come on, you're, you're a teacher of the law. How you don't know these things? Because this, being baptized in water, in a ruach, being the city, is not a New Testament thing. Because it's speak right, it's spoken of right here in Ezekiel. Let me read it again. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. And we talking about sprinkle like after, right? Amen. A thousand. I will cleanse you. See, because a sprinkle can't cleanse you. You've got to be dumped and drowning. <laughs> okay. I know some of y'all think I'll be keeping y'all in the water a little extra, you know, just drowning a little bit. I will cleanse you from all your impurities, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new ruach in you. What is a new ruach? I'm about to tell you. I will move from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my Ruach, Yah's Ruach in you and move you. Now once this Ruach comes into you, what is it going to allow you to do? Once the Spirit comes in you, it will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Hallelujah. Let's keep laying the foundation. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 through 10. When you're there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. The heart is deceitful above all, all things. Say all things. all things. See, now this is what the people, when they say, oh, well, y'all knows my heart. Right, he does. He knows wicked above all Say all things. All you know, that was a, that was a cop out in Christianity. You go, you hit somebody with some scripture, yeah, yeah, but y'all, y'all knows my heart. He does. And guess what? I can tell what's in your heart. How can you tell what's in a person's heart? Actions, but the Bible is specific about something. About what? By your mouth. What you speak is out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. So ain't no way in the world you convince me brother that you don't got no sugar in your tank if your essence is too long oh. <laughs> it's sophisticated not sophisticated <laughs> but your ass too long stop that right come on come on I've been correcting my sons and they've been babies. Yes. My son, have my wife, no. You know, my wife thought, you know, my son, he may just come in and his, his hand a little, I'm like, boy, fix your hand before you talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but fix your hand, bro. Don't, don't come at me. Don't come at me like this. Straight up that wrist. But straight up that wrist. 
Thank the most high we have strong men here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got men that's going to take care of their business and be men about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ain't got no feminine men. We're going to be strong men. And our men going to love their wives. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ain't going to touch your wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because all the other men to beat to your house to beat the brakes off. Hallelujah. 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 That's for real. Hallelujah. Right. Sisters, Hallelujah. don't you hesitate to call. Even, I'm not going to say, I know where to come. If you call, now they got to forgive me because if you call me, I'm just driving over. I might call the ox on the way because we got to protect our queen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The most I gave you that woman. He ain't give you just a man and a user. That's right. The most I cares about his daughters. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The heart. I don't. I, I just read one part of that. I've been. Let me, <laughs> let me get into it. Hallelujah. Right. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Desperately. Who can know it? Ah, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. So you wonder why things happen in your life. It's because of what's in your heart. Right. Some things won't change until your heart changes. Hallelujah. Let's keep building. Psalms chapter 19, verses 12 through 13. Psalms chapter 19, verses 12 through 13. When you're there, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We just laying a foundation. We're going to start building. We got to lay this foundation. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Who can understand his ears? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Say secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from the pres presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then, say then, then, then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. This is the psalmist. He's telling you, then I'm going to be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. We have to pray like this when we're dealing with ourselves. Search my heart, y'all. If you find any wickedness in it, remove it. Yes. Put it in my face. Show it so I can release it and let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep building. First John chapter 3. Verses 5 through 10. First John chapter 3. Verses 5 through 10. When you there, say hallelujah. You need time. We're away. That's the second part of the Bible. I'm hoping. Ain't no Tanakh only people in because we you need the other part of the Bible too. Hallelujah. You need the testimony as long as with the Tanakh. Hallelujah. First John 3, verses 5 through 10. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Say no sin. Whosoever abideth in him, sin it not. Say sin it not. Uh oh. Whosoever sin it hath not seen him, neither known him. Now notice the saying sin it, and not just sin. Sin it means it's a continual act. You constantly doing it. Sin is you mess up, you repent, you turn away from it, you go on. That's why the Bible says the soul that sin in, it shall die. Because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he, Yah, is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. Say of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. So there was never a time when he was righteous then. That's the Lucifer doctrine, teach you. Y'all go check that out. That kills that whole Lucifer. You know, he was a good angel and then he fell. That's Greek mythology. Yeah. 
Yeah. The Bible don't teach that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's on our, on our YouTube page. I check that out. He that committed sin is of the devil, but the devil sinned from the beginning. That's what Mashiach told the Pharisees and Sadducees too. Because remember, he was talking to them in John chapter 8. And he was like, yo, man, y'all brothers is wicked. And then, you know, when he stopped talking, then he was like, they was like, man, our father's Abraham. She was like, man, your father is the devil. See, back then, I was like seeing your mama. Because they picked up stones. They tried to stone him, and he slipped off. Hallelujah. Some people need to take a DNA test because y'all ain't some of some folks' father. We need more, more really to come up there. Just say, y'all, you are not the father. He that committed sin is of the devil, and the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Elohim was manifested that he might destroy the works of Hasatan. Whosoever is born of Yah, do it not commit sin. Ooh, that's just sin right there. So if you're born of Yah, you don't supposed to be committing sin. Boy, it's quiet today. Whosoever is born of Yah, do not commit a sin. For why? Because his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of Yah. In this, the children of Yah are manifest in the children of Asatah. See, the same person when I just said that said, man, that ain't true. Therefore, because of this, the children of Yah are manifest in the children of Asatah. You don't think the most I got power to do anything and he can't have you to walk righteous before him continuously? Are you crazy? It's all about a choice, say a choice. Oh, man. Let's keep it. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26. For if we sin willfully, say willfully, willfully. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. The writer of Hebrews even writes that when you willfully go out and sin, it's like you crucify the Son of Yah afresh all over again. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. We still laying the foundation. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. When you didn't say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of which I told you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Now, if you keep reading that same verse, it goes into the fruit of the Ruach. Not the fruits. The fruit. It's only how many fruit? One. One. So you can't have half of the fruit. They don't think you, well, I got those fruits, but I don't have these fruits. No. It's only one fruit. Because it says the fruit of the Ruach. Is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, self control. You got to have all of those in order to operate in the fruit. Say the fruit. But either the fruit of the Ruach is going to show through, or the works of the flesh is going to show through. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. James chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. Then we got, I think this is the last scripture, we probably got one more, then we're going to get into it. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which Yahweh had promised to them that love him. 
Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yah. For Yah cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But, say but. but. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Then when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren and sisters. Put this in your ruach. Romans chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. I'm going to just read it for the sake of time. Knowing this, that our old man, say our old man. Amen. Our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. What is destroyed? Done away, over, done, right? That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from well, you won't kind of, no, it said, he that is dead is kind of, well, he that is dead, they're going to struggle a little bit. They are, for say, free. free. See, some of us are standing behind the bars and the door is unlocked. Right. All you got to do is open it and, and go. But it's your choice. So, let's get into it. What is Sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law or Torah. Hallelujah. Sin ain't just you doing something bad and you know, you know, you just Christian say, well, you know, it's just going against the will of the most high. What's his will? You know, it's real, it's the Bible. Okay, what's the Bible? What is the foundation of the whole Bible? Torah. Torah. Say Torah. Torah. The first five books. Nothing from after Torah all the way to Revelations can go against what Torah says. It all has to line up with Torah. It has to. Even the prophets, even the Psalms and the Proverbs, they can't come and introduce new laws because the Torah is the foundation. Hallelujah. Torah, say Torah. Torah. Torah means to aim and shoot an arrow in order to hit a mark. Torah means to aim and shoot an arrow in order to hit a mark or a standard. Say a standard. So Torah is the standard of holiness. The law can't save you. The law cannot save you. The law shows you your sin and then it points you to Mashiach. It says, you see how much of a sinner you are? Okay, now go over there to that Savior because he can save you. That's what the law does. That's why Paul said, I will not know what sin is if the law did not say that I shall not covet. To sin, which is check, in Hebrew means to miss. You see how it's coming together? You see how 1 John 3 and 4 makes sense? That sin is a transgression on the law. Torah, Torah means to hit the mark. Sin means to miss the mark. So when you sin, you're missing the mark of Torah. That's what sin is. You're missing the mark. You're missing the standard that the Most High laid up in front of you and said, this is my standard of holiness. If you don't look like this, you're not holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what sin is. You need Torah to validate righteousness and know what sin is. Because without Torah, without law, there is no sin. There is no sin without law. There is no crime without law. Hallelujah. There is. Do you not know that no one can hold you accountable for murder if there was no law that says you can't murder? 
The police can't pull me over for speed, and if there's no law that says I can't speed. So I'm curious with folks that say the law's done away with, what standard is the most high gonna hold you to? Well, Mashiach said that the law hangs on these two things. Love the Lord your your, your Elohim with all your heart, mind, soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That wasn't nothing new. That's mentioned in the law. But he said these two, the law hangs on. So they are, what's those things called on the door? Hinges. But the law is the door. How many people ever walk to a door and admire the hinges? <laughs> Nobody, right? Wow, these are nice. But you go and see, while they're standing and looking at the hinges, they're going to miss what's behind the door. Because they don't go through it. You need law. Why? Because law is a standard of holiness that shows you what the most high standard is so you can reach a certain destination in life. Hallelujah. We are very capable of overcoming sin. Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, by the time we finish, you won't know it. You are very capable of overcoming sin. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to sin if you don't want. That's why the Bible says, if, say if. Yes. If is the biggest small word in the Bible. That means it's contingent upon something. That means if you do something, then there's a result that comes after. But he said, if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. He didn't say when you sin. He said, if you sin. So you don't have to sin if you don't want to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we master and overcome sin? Reason why we going through this lesson is because y'all know we walking under that rod. Right. Ain't gonna be no excuses. Walking under that rod, you come in the covenant, you see the most out. I have repented of my sin. If there's anything that, that I have and I choose to hold on to, that judgment for. See anybody that's scared to do that? That means they still holding on to stuff. Uh, I know we got some people that stay at home, but eventually Zoom gonna be out of there. Because folks gonna be trying to stay home so they ain't gotta come under that rod and watch Zoom. It's gonna be dope. Oh, I just messed somebody idea. Uh, how do we master and overcome sin? By learning to avoid it. By learning to avoid it. See, I'm not going to set myself up for sin. I know I'm married to a beautiful woman. And I know there's another beautiful woman out there. Hallelujah. Okay, 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 married woman. Please don't think you're the only beautiful woman out there. Because there are other beautiful women out there. You know that? You shouldn't feel insecure about that. Because your husband selected you for a reason. Just like I know there's more handsome men out there. According to my wife. I'm not calling them handsome. <laughs> so I know that. But the way I avoid sin, I'm not going to entertain a woman that's coming to me talking about she wants private prayer sessions. Because right. Right. I know them laying her hands is going to be laying other places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if I'm single, man, I'm not going over a single woman house too late. Because we ain't gonna, we gonna talk about the Bible, but we gonna be standing in Songs of Solomon and talking about her breasts. And, just, and then you gonna try to bring the Bible for why you felt. No, you set yourself up for sin. And the Bible says he's faithful that when you're tempted, he'll give you a way out. But some of us don't take the way out. So, so you could be on your way driving to go do some sin. Mm -hmm. That could be your only goal. I'm going to do this sin. And then I'll repent later. You driving there and a car cut off. That's your way out. See? You mad at the car. You call. So what you do, you so in love with that sin, you call AAA to come fix your car. It's three hours later. And you still drive to go do the sin. Where the most I said, I've given you a way out. 
See, you on the computer watching pornography and the computer just shuts off? The devil is a lie. No. No. Pastor Todd is not. Pastor Todd has nothing to do with that. The most I shut that computer off. Hallelujah. This video is crazy. I'm this stupid internet. You call, cancel your internet, get a new internet, just so you can watch the video. You're missing your way out. Yes, hallelujah. You learn to master sin by learning to avoid it. So if I see a woman, I always use this, if I see a woman coming this way, all right? I know you got kids in it, but if I can see her backside from the front, I'm not going to set myself up and look at that when it walk by. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to turn this way before she start walking this way so I can just catch it. <laughs> oh, I just told her something. <laughs> oh, boy. I just messed some man up, boy. <laughs> and I your wife like, oh, that's what he be doing. <laughs> Don't set yourself up for sin. Because oh, yeah. you're going to find yourself laying in the lot of lap. You're going to wake up without power. How do you avoid sin? By walking in the Ruach. That's the way you defeat sin. You avoid sin. By walking in the Ruach. Galatians 5, 16 through 17. This I say then. Walk in the Ruach. Say walk in the Ruach. Walk in the Ruach. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the ruach, and the ruach against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Remember, we talked about this about three Shabbats ago. Warring for your what? Your soul. Remember the message we did? Yes. So on our YouTube page, I'll check it out. When we show you the real battle, your soul, your spirit is after your soul, and your flesh is after your soul. Whichever one wins is the one that you're going to be subject to. The battle that the spirit and the flesh is having is over your soul. Who can get influence over the soul? Because what does the soul consist of? Mind, will, and emotions. So if your flesh can get your mind, then you get your will, and get your emotions, you got your soul. Now you're being led by your flesh. Your flesh is speaking to your soul to control your spirit instead of your spirit speaking to your soul to control the flesh. Oh. And I will always mess you up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just saying all that mess me up. Why is it important to walk in the spirit? Because that is what we are created mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. True worship. Worship, what we was doing up here earlier was worship, right? What we was doing worship, worship. but you worship, but she, I told the woman at the well, it's going to come a time where you're going to worship me in Ruach and in truth. So that means you're going to have to walk in the spirit and live a truthful life. Because that's true worship. True worship is conforming to the image that the Most High created you to be. Always give this example. A lion gives the most high true worship because a lion is doing what a lion was created to be. He's walking in the jungle. He's roaring. He's eating all the animals. That's what a lion was created to be. So he gives the most high true worship. A hyena gives the most high true worship. He laughing. He running around. He messing with the lions. He's giving the most high true worship. Hallelujah. Because he's conforming to the image that he was created to be. The way we give the most high true worship is by conforming to the image that he created us to be. What is the image? The image is walking, looking, acting just like him. Yes, hallelujah. The true worship of LeBron James ain't the one that's at every game. Young brother LeBron and all LeBron autographs. No. The true worship of LeBron James is the one that's looking like LeBron James when LeBron James ain't even in town. Mm -hmm. He talked like LeBron James. He walking like LeBron James. The true worship of the Most High ain't the one that come to the assembly every Shabbat. They say in Shabbat Shalom, they got their fringes, they got their hair wrap, they got the long skirts. 
The true worship of the most high is the one that's looking like y'all, walking in the true image, even when nobody's looking. Right. Hallelujah. 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 True worship. That's why it's important to walk in the spirit, because that is what, put this in your ruach, that is what we are created to do. By giving y'all true worship and walking in the Ruach, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's how you avoid sin. The unnatural struggle of sin. See, some folks think it's natural. Well, you know, we all struggle with sin. You only struggle if you want to. Okay. For a Hebrew, it's not normal to sin. Man. For a, let me say that again. For a Hebrew, a one that's in covenant with the Most High, it's not normal to sin. Or more, you don't sin. I never said that. But even if I if I sit up here and say I do, it don't make it normal still. That means it's some growing I got to do. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For evil, sinning is not normal. Put that in your rule. Everything that is created has a natural flow. Say a natural flow. And when it operates in that flow, there is no struggle. Man, that just that just teach right there. Somebody didn't catch it. Let me repeat it. Everything that is created has a natural flow. Say a natural flow. And when it operates in that flow, there is no struggle. What were you created to do? Worship. So it should be natural. Hallelujah. And it should be a struggle not to worship. Hallelujah. See, I'm not talking about uh, I'm talking about walking as he walks. True worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Water does not struggle to flow. It does not. It flows. Because that's what it was created to do. Wind does not struggle to blow. It blows. Because that's what it was created to do. Hallelujah. The wind don't be like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Knocking stuff over, anything in this way. It's blowing. Nothing is going to stop it. Why? Because that is what it was created to do. Rain don't struggle to fall. It does not. It just falls. The sun does not struggle to shine. It just shines because that is what it was created to do. Yes. Followers of Yah don't struggle to follow Yah. We just follow. Oh man. Hallelujah. Oh man. It's that applause here. Thank you. Applause. Applause. You know what? I should have. I, I probably should have hooped it. I said uh, the sun. Uh, it's <laughs> you are. That's what I'm gonna start doing. I'm gonna start hooping it out there. <laughs> I said the bottle. It ain't your flow. It ain't. It don't, it don't work. <laughs> it don't work. You struggling? <laughs> I'm struggling. I am. <laughs> Followers, no, 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 no. followers of y'all don't struggle to follow you. They just follow them. Why? Because that is what they are created to do. So struggling with sin is unnatural. Because we are designed, created as a natural flow to follow y'all. So falling in the sin, living in the sin, walking in the sin is very unnatural for you. So you don't have to struggle with sin because that is not your natural flow. Right. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. One hand clap. Two, three, four, five, six. Hallelujah. 
See, you don't got to struggle with sin. I know the church told you, you you're going to sin. When you fall down. Yeah, it happens. That stuff happens. A learned response to sin. Anybody know what a learned response is? Anybody? Y'all knows my heart. Anybody? Anybody know what a learned response is? Somebody say that's a learned response. Somebody talking? Somebody taught you. Calm. Exactly. And you believe it without investigating. A learned response to sin. After we go through this, you're going to understand I have a learned response towards sin for some of us. A learned response is a reaction that has been acquired by learning. Okay? So, for example, a mom holds up a card and says, dog. She just holds the card up says, dog. Without reading the card, the child yells, dog, every time the mother holds up any card. Mm. Dog. 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 That is a learned response. Mm. That child never looked at the card to investigate it's really a dog. He's just going by what the mother did the first time. God? Mm -hmm. Struggling with sin is a learned response that has been taught by those who struggle with sin mm -hmm. or not final Torah. Because sin is a transgression of or Torah. God? So, struggling with sin has become a learned response that has been taught by those who struggle with sin because they don't follow the law, i.e. the church. So the church taught you that you're going to always struggle with sin. Why? Because to them, there is no law. If there is no law, I'm not saying every Christian believes this, but there is no sin. I mean, you can do whatever you want. There's no guidelines to it. So you've been taught by a system that you are, you have to struggle with sin. Everybody struggles with sin. So because of that, you took that reign with it and just automatically assumed, hey, I struggle with sin. In so much that you even brought it over to the Hebraic walk and think that you can still struggle with sin and walk in covenant with the Most High. Yah forbid. This is not religion. This is covenant. Hallelujah. We walk in our culture. And the most high is the Elohim of this culture. You just can't walk in, praise, go home, and then, no. You have to walk even as he walked. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore okay. Be ye therefore okay. Be ye therefore struggle over. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in the Shamaim, or heaven, is perfect. That word perfect means in Greek, one who has reached the proper height of virtue. It is taken from the Hebrew word kalal, which means to stand upright. So stand upright. He said be perfect. He didn't say sin a little bit. Because you got to advocate. No. Be ye perfect. Why? Because that is my standard of holiness. Yes, hallelujah. You don't supposed to struggle with sin because that ain't your natural flow. That's right. That's like fire trying to act like water. That's not his natural flow. Mm -mm. A saint ain't just a sinner who fell down. Somebody's listening now on the way. This is God. <laughs> we fall down. We get up. Oh, that's that's my jet. A saint ain't just a sinner who fell down. A saint is a child of the most high God. Hallelujah. A saint ain't just a sinner. He more than just a sinner who fell down. And God of Some of y'all listen on the way Just take the song and throw it out Maybe I throw it out I'm just kidding <laughs> Throw it out okay, Throw it out, throw it out. <laughs> Donnie McCartney And then 
<laughs> All right, here he y'all stop him. Y'all stop him. <laughs> y'all didn't, didn't know me too, but I, I know that you know. GMWA Awards. Hey, gospel Music, Gay Man with AIDS Awards. Oh, that's what it's best with it. Is all these most ninety percent, not all, of these gospel artists are homosexual. I believe it. Yeah, it's been exposed, you know, and this is just normal now. Oh yeah, yeah, he's gay. Okay, okay. Bobby Sugar Bear Jones. Y'all remember that brother on BET? Bobby Jones. That brother was about his sweet. Flame in. With the church applauding. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. They say Tyler Perry do ministry when he put on a woman's dress. Right. right. That is a drag queen. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, take the Tyler Perry yes, videos out your house. Take them out. Yeah. You know, my family used to get mad at me when we used to have family gatherings. And he used to, you know, because at every Hebrew gathering, Tyler Perry get popped on somewhere. Every time he got popped on, my kid, hey, yeah, let's go. Come on, we out. Because ain't nothing funny. Even before, right. ain't nothing funny about a man in a dress. That's right. That's right. My pops, who's not even, Woo! don't have an inch of the most high, told me that when I was, bro, ain't, ain't nothing funny about a woman in a dress. Amen. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a man in a dress. Well, <laughs> yeah, women, it's okay if you be in a dress. Ain't nothing funny. <laughs> About a man in a dress. That's right. Tyler Perry is just doing ministry. Tyler Perry is a drag queen. Oh, see that? See, he ain't a drag queen. What is the definition of a drag queen? A man that enjoys dressing up as a woman to impersonate a woman. Sometimes, even in a regular interview, he forget he out of the Medea outfit. Because his essence be on. Oh, man. I'm not talking about the successful, but I'm glad he's successful, but at the expense of breaking tour, he is. See, we don't want to get that deep. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave your Tyler Perry alone. I'm not going to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and then, you know, another reason why I don't like this movie is this is my body. Because the dark skin brother always messing up, and a light skin brother got to come save the dog. The Rock with Fox. <laughs> right. I didn't know what to do without I said, it's Dark Skin Brothers just eating to me. Light Skin Brothers, hey, how you doing? <laughs> dark Skin Brothers just being woman and slamming and I'm like, man, you make a Dark Skin Brothers so crazy out here. That, that was just my thought, I see. I it's like that. It is. So, we have to make sure we separate the holy from the profane, y'all. Huh? That's right. That ain't ministry. That's drag queen. Right. Ism. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> it's not. Know. He is a drag queen. He's no different from RuPaul. Right, right. 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 Hallelujah. Right. No different. He just don't keep the dress on all day. So if you're watching it, leave it alone. Right. But you're breaking a commandment. There's nothing funny about a man wearing a woman's dress. See, but what they do is they, they try to feminize our men. See, that's how homosexuality snuck in. See, I'm, I'm going to give you something real quick. Homosexuality came in because what they did is they wanted to desensitize. See, desensitize. Desensitize means I do something in front of you for so long, you get used to it that it becomes normal to you. I always give an example. If you're around a stink person all day, eventually, every day, they ain't gonna stink to you no more. Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> I, 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 y'all remember, remember my ugly friend, right? You got an ugly friend? He ain't around with someone, you forget how ugly he is, you run to a girl, like, get out of here, you, your friend ugly. Like, man, I forgot how ugly he is. Because you got used to his ugliness, right? You've been desensitized to it. So what they did is, in order to bring and sneak homosexuality in, what they did is they put men in dresses 
and it will make you laugh. So at first you probably was like, no, that's nasty. But then you start listening to his jokes and it became funny. The Marvins, the, the Jamie Foxx and Living Color. They will constantly do it to be feminized men. And then you laugh at that at their expense. Instead of laughing at Tyler Perry, we need to pray for that brother because he got something eternal going on. That brother's struggling with something. But we laugh. We lift up his gift and, ex and, and ignore his issue. And he's lifted up so high, his issue is what destroys him. An issue. That's why you look at these rich people and say, why did he kill himself? Because they have issues that no one is dealing with. Why? Because everybody looks at their gift and they lift them up high. But it's issues, it's underlying issues that these people go with. That's why they be millionaires and billionaires and they killing themselves. Because no one knows the real them. Nope. That's why Mashiach, when he came to the rich young ruler, the Bible says he looked at him and loved him. He looked past everything the rich young ruler had. The riches, the diamonds, the pearls, and he looked at him and spoke to the him that was behind him. See, nobody ever dealt with the rich young ruler like that. That's why the Bible says he walked away sorrowful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So instead of running up to these famous people getting autographs, you need to preach in the basura. Oh, man. Okay. June chapter 1 and 24. Now, see, we talk about we fall down and we get up. What does June chapter 1 verse 24 say? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Oh, man. And to present you faultless without sin. No sin. Before the Father. We talk about falling down and getting up. We fall down. We get up. We fall down. We no. Now unto Him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes, yes hallelujah. Instead of falling, hold on to His unchanging hand so you don't have to fall. No That's more. right. Hallelujah. 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 Struggling to go in the wrong direction. Oh, this good. It is. Struggling to go in the wrong direction. Mm. Struggling <laughs> to go in the wrong direction. Struggling with sin is like trying to paddle upstream. I'm going to let that sink in. Struggling with sin is like trying to paddle upstream. You have an escalator, and you're trying to go up the uh, downside, and you're trying to keep going, going, going. No. Going, 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 going. Nah. My kids know what that is because they always they trying. Bro, go down. It's down. That's the perfect example. Struggling with sin is like trying to paddle upstream. There is nothing for us upstream. So why are we paddling in that direction? Everything we need is downstream. I'm going to explain. There's no use of us paddling upstream. Everything we need is downstream. Say downstream. downstream. As a matter of fact, we don't even need paddles. All we have to do is point our boat in the right direction so that the boat, our life, can flow easily in the right direction so that the water, which is the Ruach, will lead us where we need to go. We don't need no paddles. Point your boat in the right direction and allow the Ruach to lead you. Go with the flow of the water. That is your natural flow. But some of us try to paddle upstream. We're struggling with something that we don't have to struggle with. The first mistake you got is you got a paddle on your hand. You don't need to paddle. Stop fighting against the most high. Your arm's too short. He came boxer. Start letting the Ruach lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Point your boat in the right direction. See, it's very important which way we point our boat. A lot. Say a lot. See, Abraham went through a lot because he took a lot with him. 
Hallelujah. Most high never tell him to take a lot with him. But because he took a lot, he went through a lot. Some of y'all right now got a lot with you. Mm. Get rid of that lot. Or you're going to go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lot pitched his tent towards Sodom. He found himself in Sodom because that was the direction he pitched his tent. Be mindful of the way you pitch your tent. Where you point your boat is very necessary because it will determine what direction you go. That's why you had to when, when, whenever you're dealing with sin, you have to repent. Say repent. repent. We talked about repentance before. It's burning it, turning it, and going in the other direction. It ain't just turning and going. You got to burn that house down so that you don't return to it no more. But see, the problem is some of us may burn it, but we try to come to the most high like this. Backwards. And we wonder why we tripping over stuff and falling over stuff. Because we don't got our eyes. We don't got our boat pointed in the right direction. Sin does not have to master you. You are designed to master sin. Hallelujah. Be ye perfect as your father in just like he is perfect. Does he sin? Okay, so that should tell you. For more to starting with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop struggling with sin and just allow the ruach or the waters to lead you. John chapter 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the ruach of truth, is come, he will guide you into all. Say all. All, all truth. But he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. Wherever he shall hear. So who's telling him this? The Father. Say the Father. Wherever he shall hear, that he shall speak. It will show you things to come. Hallelujah. We're almost done. Which heaven do you live like? You have to ask yourself this question. Do you live more like the first act or more like the second act? Are we living more like the first Adam or the second Adam? Second Adam is Yahushua. We know who the first Adam is. Romans chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. For by one man's Adam of fifth death reigned by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yahushua. Therefore, as by the offenses, offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift, which is eternal life, came upon all men unto justification for life. If we have accepted Yahushua, we should be taken on his nature. The old man, Adam, is dead so that the new man Yahushua can live through us we don't take on the first Adam characteristics we live like the second say the second Adam 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 therefore if any man be in Mashiach he is a new creation Old things have passed away, and behold, say behold. behold. Behold means look, I should be able to see that all things are now new. Then if you go to the next verse, which I don't have it up here, verse 18, the first few words in there is say, and all things are of Yah. So everything that's new is not your stuff. It's of Yah. Hallelujah. Make a decision. We closing on right here. We gonna read. You got to make a decision, yo. You do. Today. You really supposed to make it last week. But the most I was giving you grace another week, another day, to still make that decision. Make the decision. Be done away with sin. Be done. Consider your ways, Israel. Two o'clock in the morning, the most I gave you this. 
had a whole different lesson plan. Sleeping, fell asleep. My wife usually, you know, made me some coffee if I'm, if I'm staying up. Fell asleep, woke up. Said, wow, most high you. He said, my people have to be done away with sin. Mm -hmm. They have to know that they can master sin. Mm -hmm. Sin does not master them. Mm -mm. He said, I am their only master. Mm -hmm. Sin is not their master. I've given them power to overcome sin. Yes, the problem is they are not utilizing the power that I have given them. They think they have to struggle. They think that they have to fall and get back up. And we fall down and we get back up. For a saint is just a sinner. No, a saint is a man of the most high. A golf for golfs. A swimmer swims. And a sinner sings. That's what they're supposed to do. But a man of the most high don't supposed to sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Be a long way to verse more to 23. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yeah, yeah. Y'all forbid. Y'all forbid. Yeah, forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Yahushua, Hamashiach, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That's why we go and we get baptized. Because we're showing a representation that we have been buried with Mashiach and that we rise up with them a new man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Mashiach went to the grave, he went with the flesh, but he came up with a new body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That like as Mashiach was raised from the dead, being the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, say our old man, our old man, our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve Amen. sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Mashiach, we believe that we should also live with him. Knowing that Mashiach being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Death. Why does death have no more dominion over him? Because he's not sinning. Because the wages of sin is so death is not going to have rule over you if you don't sin. For if that he died, he died unto sin once. Say once. once. Oh, thank you, y'all. The sin that you died to, you got to die to it once. You can't keep going back and dying from that same sin. You can't do it. You got to be done. Say be done. Be done. Be done with that sin. Whatever that sin is, you got to die to it. How many times? Once. 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 Because that's not true repentance if you keep going back. Now we be dead with Mashiach. We believe that we should live with him. Knowing that Mashiach being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. But he that died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto Yah. Likewise, so just like you, reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. sin but alive unto Yah through Yahushua, Hamashiach, our master. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that ye should obey the lust thereof. Oh, hallelujah. Are we ain't finished. <laughs> Neither. Yield ye your members, your hands, your fingers, touching yourself. Oh. Touching the wrong thing. Oh. Okay. Neither yield your members as instruments 
of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto Yah as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instrument unto righteousness of Yah. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Oh boy, that, that, that right there. Go ahead, Christianity, just take that one verse. We're not under law, we're under grace. What Paul is talking about here is that now when you break the law, you don't have to suffer the consequences of breaking that law. Because Mashiach already died for you. Remember, we went over. There were certain sins you couldn't sacrifice for. Adultery, you had to die. There was no bringing over the land. Oh, y'all forgive me. If you commit adultery, you got to die. If you committed adultery, you have to die. There was no sacrifice for those sins. So he said, when you sin, remember he's talking about giving your members over to unrighteousness. When you commit sexual sin, you don't have to worry about the consequences of the law if you have Mashiach. Because Mashiach died for us, so we don't have to suffer the consequences for the sin. He became a guilt offering for us. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that all in the law, but Lord, read the last verse in Romans chapter 3. That'll just, you know, explain it all. It said, Do we avoid faith? I forgot. What I Somebody read Romans 3, verse 31. Read that. Read it again. Huh? Do we then make void of the law through faith? Just because we have faith, we don't follow the law? Yah forbid. But that's what Christians do. So let me get back to it. What shall we say then? What then shall we say? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Yah forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants who obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether it's sin that leads unto death or obedience unto righteousness. righteousness. But thank Yah that ye were, say were, were, you were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. What doctrine was delivered unto you? Torah and the Besorah. Hallelujah. There was no New Testament when he was writing Romans. No. There was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The only form of scripture he had was the Torah and the Old Tanakh, the whole Old Testament. Being then made free from sin, he becomes servants of righteousness. I speak after this manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed of? For the end of those things is death, but now being made free, say free. Free from sin and become servants of Yah, ye have your fruit unto holiness in the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Yah is eternal life through Yahushua Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to make a decision. You got to choose now if you're going to be done. Away with sin. What sin? The sin that you are keeping secret that nobody knows about. You have to be done with that sin. I'm not just talking to adults. I'm talking to children too. Because we are getting ready to see the Most High in a different light, y'all. The Ancient of Days is coming back. He's going to start killing kids. So I talk, I talk, I talk to my children. You see, and I hope y'all hope ain't playing right now, right? Because I let them know how serious it is. If I gotta come up and slap the taste out of your mouth just so you can live, I'm gonna do that. I'm talking about my kids. I don't know. <laughs> but 
if I have to do that, I'm going to do that. That's why I want them worship. I don't want you. I don't want you coming while we worship. I want you worshiping. I don't want you playing on no kick. Right? I want you worship because I'm teaching you now. That's what they did in the ancient times. They taught them. They was little. We we that we dedicated them. Come, go to. They gave them to Samuel. King Josiah, how old was he when he ruled? Eight. Eight years old when he ruled over Israel, yeah. But we look at our eight year old, ah, he just ate, dog. No. You downplaying what he can really do. That's why I hold my sons to a high, I hold them to a high, higher standard than any kid in here. Why? Because you reflect me. I don't care how good I teach. How much I be you reflect me. So if I'm allowing you to do whatever, most I gonna get me. He gonna deal with me. Yeah, he'll get them, but I'm held accountable. I was just talking to my wife. We just had a call. I said, no, we got to hold them accountable. Ain't no more playing. Why? Because if we gotta go, we're gonna have to go. And if you get left, you get left. That that is a saying in my house now. They know. They know they gotta get it for themselves. And when I say them, I'm really talking about the two oldest in and them. I, I say him, but I know. He listening, so he gotta get it too. When we talk about those that I had an age of accountability. My oldest son had an age of accountability. Mm -hmm. He he could get left. My middle son too. Because we got to teach our children now. This is not just for adults. Do you know the most I kills children? Do you know that? Do you, do you know the most I kills children for the sin of the parents? Do you know that? Yes. He will kill a whole family for the sin of the church. That's why. See, this is not religion. This ain't Christianity. That ain't the most high I know. Well, you talking about a different most high. You talking about a different Elohim. Because see, we know the Elohim that's so gracious and loving and he rescued us. You know, he's going to gather us from the four corners. But who knows the Elohim that will kill? Man, that's a hard saying, boy. You better talk with your children because the time is coming. A time is coming when they will have to make a decision for themselves. And if you choose to choose them over the most high, the same judgment is going to fall on you with them. That is where we're at. That's why you teach them now. So you don't have to get in that predicament and panic and wonder. You teach them, you raise them up now. They, you, do you not? For, for those that don't know, your kids, they don't have to like you. Don't. Do you know that? So, see, some parents thought, well, my kid, he, they have to, they're not going to like me. So, I'm willing to be the bad guy in my house any day. I mean, my wife be the bad guy too, but she, she like, you know, my wife is more gracious. So, if it's something, she like, go tell them to bed. Hey, bro, go to bed. It's only 7.30. What you say? <laughs> Did you just respond when I just gave you something? We, we got to teach you that too. But give you a directive, do it. Just do it. No questions. But why? But what? Something wrong with your teeth, bro. You know how you try to find something to throw? Like, man, that'll kill him. Like, like this ain't. You got to let them know. You, I, I love my children. I love my sons and my daughter. And they, they'll tell you, they don't want no other dad. They know. But when it comes to the things of the most, I'm very serious about it. I'm very serious about it. Because see, this is not Christianity. 
So they just can't ride your coattail until they are ready to make a decision on their own. They are in covenant with the Most High because you are in covenant with the Most High. So the Most High is holding them to a standard. And it's your job, parents, to teach them. More things are caught than taught. So you can teach your children, but if you ain't living what you're teaching, they ain't following. They going right in the room, man, mom and dad fit, man. They, they just talking about the Bible. They ain't really going to do nothing. They going to be arguing in the next few minutes. They ain't really. They'll be cussing each other out in the next, the next day or so. So more things are caught than taught. So you wonder why your children are following your most high, because they look at you and say, you don't got the same trust in the most high. But you think you, you can't fool no teenager. That's one thing you can't do. You cannot fool a teenager. If they want some Jordans, you can't go get no sneakers with a J missing. You can't trick them. You can't go get them no Hordens. You can't. They will go to school barefoot before they put their feet in. Right? Because you can't trick them. They're like, nah, nah, bro, that's, that's fake. Nah, I don't want that. They are looking for something real because they are looking for something to get them out of the reality that they are in. So if they don't see you living a truthful life, true worship, walking in the spirit and in truth, then they are not going to want to pursue the Elohim that you call Yah. Mm. And the Most High will hold you accountable because of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you stand?